Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Demico 10-inch rearview mirror dash cam with GPS. You'll receive the dashboard camera, external GPS antenna, two sets of mounting rubber bands, rear camera mounting screws and double-sided tape, reset pin, 11-foot mini USB accessory port adapter with right angle connector, reverse camera, 17 and a half foot long rear camera cable, plastic trim tool, and an instruction manual. Note that a memory card is not included. This is the dashboard camera. It measures 10 inches wide, two and three quarter inches tall, and one and a half inches thick. The camera on the side extends outward up to an inch to fit over your existing rear view mirror. The angle of the lens is also adjustable. Along the top, you have the USB power input, rear camera input, micro SD card slot, and GPS input. Just below that on the back is the reset pinhole. I've got here a 32 gigabyte micro SD card installed, though it can support up to 128 gigabytes. On the bottom, you've got the power button and microphone. The GPS antenna simply plugs into the port on the far right. The antenna has an adhesive back so you can adhere it to your windshield or dashboard. To turn the camera on, press and hold the power button. The unit has a small internal battery in it that allows it to run for 15 to 20 minutes unplugged. Along the top, you'll see the record status light, resolution, runtime, date, time, mic status, battery life, and current travel speed. The touch icons along the bottom toggle on and off sound recording, takes still photos, starts or stops recording, locks the current video being recorded, indicated by this yellow progress bar, and the gear icon is for entering the settings. In the settings, along the top, you have the back button, resolution selector for 2K and 1080p, or vice versa, for the front and rear cameras, loop recording length of 1, 3, or 5 minutes, set time lapse to 1, 2, 3 seconds or off, turn on and off audio recording, set the G sensor sensitivity, set the parking monitor sensitivity, set the screen to turn off automatically after 1, 3 minutes or never, change the video encoding, Set the video frequency. Toggle the beeping touch tone. Set the external speaker volume. Toggle on or off the power on tone. Stream media makes the default video on the screen the rear camera when the unit turns on. With the setting off, the default video feed will be the front camera. You can change the language, set the date and time, Format the SD card. Reset the unit to factory default. And scrolling down, in this section you can select your time zone. Calibrate the speed calculation from the GPS by offsetting by 2, 4, or 6. And check the firmware version. Here's an example of the boot tone. If your mirror looks cloudy, remember to peel off the protective plastic film on the front, which should make the glass a bit more clear. Though in general, it's pretty dark with a deep silver tint. For the clearest video quality, remove the plastic film on the camera lens. If you choose 2K in the video resolution, the rear camera will default to 1080p quality, and vice versa. When the front camera is 1080p, the rear camera will be 2K. There isn't a way to set 2K or 1080p resolutions for both cameras simultaneously. To install this dash cam over your existing rear view mirror, start by extending the camera to the left. Then attach the rubber bands to the hooks on either side of the unit. Note that because the camera sticks out, it may interfere with the use of the driver's side visor. 
Next, plug in the power cable and the rear camera input cable. You can hide the cables by running them between the ceiling panel and the windshield. Then under the trim along the edges of the ceiling. You may need to use the trim tool to help you pull back the trim and push the cable under it. Continue to run the rear camera input wire all the way into the trunk. Next, I installed the back camera centered just above my license plate using the adhesive sticker. Plug the rear camera input cable into the yellow connector coming from the back camera's wire. Pay close attention to the yellow connector, which has a notch that lines up with a peg in the 4-pin connector. The connection should be snug and tight with these arrows lined up. Now that the rear camera is installed, I want it to come on automatically when the car is put in reverse gear. For this, we'll have to wire the back camera to the car's reverse light. Inside my trunk, I folded down the trunk liner by removing two plastic screws, which gave me access to the reverse lights. Then, I removed the power connector from the reverse light and located the black and blue cables, which indicate negative and positive respectively. I stripped about half an inch of the rubber sleeve on the red wire coming off the rear camera input cable and pushed its end into the negative lead on the reverse light's connector before replacing it behind the bulb. Now we're ready to see the camera in action. When I start the car, the camera automatically turns on and starts recording. To adjust the brightness, swipe up or down on the right hand side of the screen. And to change the vertical field of view, swipe up or down on the left hand side of the screen. Because I installed the red signal cable into the reverse light harness, when I put the car in reverse, it'll automatically switch the view to the rear camera, and it puts up reverse guidelines to help you when backing up. The guides are great for determining just how close you are to an object behind you, and the width lines can help you parallel park. To change camera views, swipe left from the center of the screen, and you'll see a split screen of both the front and rear camera feeds, or swipe left again to see the front camera. To play back recorded files, swipe right from the center of the screen. Then tap the video thumbnail you wish to view. At 2K quality, a 5 minute clip from the front camera takes up about 500 megabytes. Conversely, at 1080p, a 5 minute clip from the front camera takes up about 350 megabytes. The video is clear and sharp with accurate colors, great saturation, and nice white balance. The rear camera footage at 1080p averages around 350 megabytes per 5 minute clip, and at 2K quality, the file sizes are around 500 megabytes. The video from this lens is also nice and clear, with a lot of detail, though you can really see the difference between the two resolutions in the image quality and clarity. Note that the GPS antenna doesn't give you a live view of your current position on the screen, nor does it allow you to obtain driving directions or view a map on the camera. Instead, it just records your travel speed and current location. The travel speed will be displayed on the mirror along the right hand side, with the date and time. To view the embedded GPS location data, you'll need to remove the memory card and transfer the files to a computer. You cannot directly connect this dash cam to a computer's USB port to transfer the files, so you'll need to use a separate card reader. If you formatted the card in the dash cam, an installation file for the viewer program, GX Player, is automatically loaded to the card. Install this program, and you can use it to watch the video files you recorded, along with the embedded GPS data. To change the settings, click the gear icon to choose Google Maps for English Maps and select kilometers or miles for speed units. Then you'll be able to see a charted map of the current video clip that you're watching, and you'll be able to see where the car was at the time the video was recorded, though the positioning isn't always perfect. Here's some video footage at night from the front camera. At night, areas in the video where there are lights are artificially brightened, sometimes to the point where they can look washed out and you might lose some clarity, and that makes it harder to read signs and license plates from nighttime footage. Yeah. 
Here's the footage at night from the rear camera, which personally I thought did a better job at controlling the white balance in the lighting. The audio in the video will be identical for both the front and rear camera feeds for the same recorded period of time. The mic picks up sounds pretty clearly, though voices may sound faint even if the speaker is sitting in the front seat. I need to actually look out my window which is blocked. One thing that I didn't like about the audio recordings is that it picks up the beeping tones when you tap the screen. So if that bothers you, you can turn those tones off in the settings. If you don't want the display to be on while you're driving, but still want to record the video, simply short press the power button on the bottom during a recording. The screen will shut off and you'll just see the mirror, but be assured that the camera will still be recording. Or you could just wait for the screensaver setting to kick in. For me, I like to set the screen to show the rear camera by default. That way, if I touch the screen accidentally during driving and activate the camera, I can still see what's behind me. With the LCD off, the mirror looks pretty much like a normal rear view mirror. It's pretty clear and gives you a nice field of view. However, it is a little bit darker than my original mirror, which for some people may be a problem at night. Overall, the quality of the video and audio are very good for this type of dash camera. The screen is nice and large, and I found the interface to be pretty easy to use and navigate. While I do wish there was a pass-through USB port on the adapter for charging and powering other devices, other than that, I found the camera works well and captures clear, high-definition video with great detail and true-to-life color. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.